Income tax 2023-2024. Standard deduction. Get ready and some coffee because you're supporting an entire generation with income tax preparation 2023-2024. Most of this information can be found in the line instructions section of the form 1040 instructions tax year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. We're looking at the standard deduction, envisioning the income tax formula, where we're going to be taking the line item of either the greater of the standard deduction or itemized deduction. Remembering that the first half of the income tax formula is, in essence, a funny income statement because we have an income tax an income statement having income or revenue minus expenses. Income is the top line. The expenses are going to be broken out into deductions, which you could call the adjustments to income or above the line deductions, schedule one deductions, and what we might call the below the line deductions or the standard deduction or itemized deductions, the ones that are greater. We're going to pick the one that is greater because the greater one will lead to a lower taxable income and the lower the taxable income the better typically for income taxes because we will result in paying less taxes we will talk about the itemized deductions later but note that many more people than in prior years are going to be taking the standard deduction because it was increased uh, a few years ago in an attempt to uh, simplify the tax code the thing that usually pushes people over into itemizing is going to be the the ownership of a home because the home will have the mortgage typically the loan that help people purchase the home and the interest related to that will often be deductible as well as the taxes including property taxes on the home also could trigger the ability to take uh, state taxes so the home is usually the question you're going to ask to see whether or not they might be more likely to taking the itemized deduction uh, versus the standard deduction. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Right now, we're just looking at the standard deduction. On the first page of the form 1040, we're looking at line 12, which is where we populate the standard deduction or itemized deduction. If we were to itemize, it would be coming from schedule A. Otherwise, we're taking the standard deduction. The general rule is on the left-hand side of the form where we can see, as we saw before and discussed, that the filing status has a significant impact on the standard deduction. The single uh, or married filing separate at 13850 If we can memorize that number, then we can simply double it to get to the married filing jointly or qualifying surviving spouse. That's going to be the 27700 which kind of makes sense, right? So you're going to say standard deduction for one individual. If those two individuals got married, then you would think the standard deduction would double. Now, again, in reality, that seems like a pretty nice deal because it's not always the case that when two people get married that they have the same level of income, right? Usually one has more than the other. And then they might start a family and it might be a little bit different than that, but it's easy to memorize and it kind of incentivizes family structure in that way. So there's that. Then you have the head of household, which as we saw before, typically requires a dependent and to be single. And that's going to be the 20,800 in between the single and married filing jointly. Now that's not the end of it because we could have added components of the standard deduction based on age and things such as blindness. So the story is not complete right here, and we will continue on those added things to be aware of them as well as we go. All right, so we have the single and married filing jointly. 
So if you or your spouse, if you are married and filing a joint return can be claimed as a dependent on someone else's return, check the appropriate box in the standard deduction. So note that the standard deduction is going to be impacted on by, in essence, your filing status. Now, if someone else can claim you as a dependent, then they are, in essence, possibly getting a benefit on their taxes from you being claimed as a dependent on their taxes, which you would think might have an impact on, on your taxes, right? It's a general idea because you, just like when you have a child, you can't really double dip on the benefits of like one social security number being a dependent of the two of the two spouses for example similar situation with yourself if you're getting tax benefits uh, by filing your return and someone else is trying to get a benefit from filing a return at, with you as a dependent right so if you are married and file a joint return you can be claimed as a dependent on someone else's return if you file the joint return only to claim a refund of withheld income tax or estimated tax paid so in other words normally when you file a married filing joint return then someone else cannot claim you as a dependent typically because now you're you're filing a joint return and claiming in essence yourself uh, for tax benefits but in special situations you might have a situation where someone else is still claiming you as a dependent and that would be if you are married and file a joint return and you can be claimed as a dependent on someone else's return if you file the joint return only to claim a refund of withheld income taxes in other words you had w-2 income they withheld money and the only and you only want to file the return to make sure that you can get back uh the withholdings so if you were a dual status alien, check the quote spouse itemizes on a separate return uh, or you were a dual status alien box. So if you were a dual status alien and you file a joint return with your spouse who was a U.S. citizen or resident alien at the end of 2023 and you and your spouse agree to be taxed on your combined worldwide income, don't check the box. All right, so now we have the age and blindness situation. So if you or your spouse, if you are married filing a joint return, were born before January 1st, 1959, or were blind at the end of 2023, check the appropriate box on the line labeled age blindness. So now we have an, an added component that could have an impact on the standard deduction, which doesn't seem like it's gonna, like it, like it would have a lot of different scenarios, but it kind of does because note like if it depends on filing status so if you're single at this time or head of household then you could have a situation of age or blindness which might have an impact on the filing status and then if someone is married now you have two people which could possibly be both age uh have the age factor met and the blindness factor met Right. So, so you can see the combinations that we have actually gets fairly complex because with a single filer, you have two added possible components, age and blindness, that could have an impact on the standard deduction. And if married, you have two individuals, both of who, whom could have these two added conditions, you know, on each of them individual that could have an impact on the standard deduction for married filers. Okay. So don't check any boxes for your spouse if your filing status is head of household. So death of spouse in 2023. Uh, if your spouse was born before January 2nd, 1959, but you died in uh, 2023 before reaching age 65, don't check the box that says, quote, spouse was born before January 2nd, uh, 1959. So now we have this cutoff issue uh, in, the, in the event of a debt death which would hopefully be kind of a rare situation for that cutoff issue a person is considered to reach age 65 on the day before the person's 65th birth date now obviously if you properly input this information into the tax return if there was a death for example hopefully the tax return will help to do these cutoffs and these dates but you want to be able to understand and interpret what the tax return is doing so you can explain it to a client and make sure the tax return is properly being populated example your spouse was born on february 14th uh, 1958 and died on february 13th 
2023. Your spouse is considered age 65 at the time of death. Check the appropriate box for your spouse. So that so the, 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 if you check the box for 65 older, then you might have again a benefit from a tax perspective, so that you could so that you could possibly take a higher standard deduction. However, if your spouse died on February 12th. 2023, your spouse isn't considered age 65. So notice it's somewhat arbitrary. They have to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> and so that you have that one day. Uh, so, and, and so your spouse isn't considered age 65. Don't check the box. Death of taxpayer in 2023. So if you are preparing a return for someone who died in 2023, see publication 501 before completing the standard deduction information. You can find that on the IRS website. And then we have blindness. So if you weren't totally blind as of December 31st, 2023, you must get a statement certified by your eye doctor or, or ophthalmologist. Okay, I can't say that word. The eye doctor. <laughs> or or uh, that is because, because now you have this situation where you might get a, a, an increase to your standard deduction, which would be a benefit if you're claiming blindness. And now, of course, you have to have the question of are you actually blind to the point of recognition that you that you should get the tax benefit of it. So you need some type of verification from that from, in essence, your eye doctor. So you can't uh, see better than 2200 in your better eye with glasses or contact lenses. So obviously we have two eyes and, you know, one eye could be better than the other eye. And so now you can get pretty technical in terms of what the condition would be uh, in order to be thought of as blind to get the higher standard deduction. Your field of vision is 20 degrees or less. Okay, if your eye condition isn't likely to improve beyond the conditions listed above, you can get a statement certified by your eye doctor uh, to this effect instead. Uh, so you must keep the statement for your records. In other words, do I have to give that statement to the IRS, no, you're going to check it off typically. And then if you get audited, the IRS questions it, then you're going to have to produce that uh, documentation, information, evidence to the auditor. So it's kind of like, again, the audit in this case, similar to like driving on the road in that you, if you speed, you're, you might not get caught. But if the, if you do get caught, then then you know you're gonna have to produce the evidence at that point in time or get hit with a penalty severe enough is the idea that it will deter people from uh dis making deceptive or, or lying statements on the tax return in the future so if you receive a notice or letter but you would prefer to have it in braille or large print you can use form 9000 alternative media preference to request notices in an alternative format, including Braille, large print, audio, or electro, uh, electronic. So you can attach Form 9000 to your return uh, or mail it separately. So you can download or view online tax forms and publications in a variety of formats, including text-only, Braille-ready files, browser-friendly HTML, other than tax forms, accessible PDFs, and large forms. So if that's something that you, that you think would be useful for yourself or clients, then you can look into those formats in more detail. Married filing separately. If your filing status is married filing separately and your spouse itemizes deductions on their return, check the quote spouse itemizes on a separate return uh, or you were a dual status alien box. So married when people are married, they have the choice of filing, married filing choice or, or jointly, which is usually the preferred option or will come up with the tax benefits most beneficial normally. But you could file married filing separately. If your filing status is married filing separately and your spouse was born before January 2nd, 1959 or was blind at the end of 2023, uh, you can check the appropriate boxes on the line labeled age blindness if your spouse had an income, uh, income isn't filing a return and can't be claimed as a dependent on another person's return. This is the uh, last page or page four of the form 1040 SR, which can provide some more information about those different combinations that could have an impact on the standard deduction 
of age uh, and blindness. So standard deduction chart, add the number of boxes checked in the age blindness section of standard deduction on page one. And then uh, if you're filing status, and here are the statuses, single married filing jointly, qualifying surviving spouse, head of household married filing separately. So when single and the number of boxes checked is one, then your standard deduction is the 15,700. If single and two boxes are checked, what would that indicate? Over the age limit and blindness, that's when it would go up to 17,550. Now, if you're married filing joint, you can see the different combinations. Now you have two people who could be, uh, who could be over the age and could have blindness, right? So if you have one person that is either over the age or blind, then the standard deduction is 29,200. If you have two people that are both over the age or one over the age and the other blind or both blind, so, you know, a combo of two of those factors, then we're at the 30,700. If you had a three, which means two people possibly over the age limit and one person blind or something like that, but possibly could be two people blind and one person over the age limit. So that would be the 32-4. And then if both people are over the age limit and both blind, then you're at the 33-7. Qualifying surviving spouse, now you have the status that is that would be uh, giving you the standard deduction similar to married, but it's the year after the death of the spouse, typically, uh, in which case you're back down to one person. So the one person could be uh, over the age limit and blind, right? If they ha had over the age limit, they would have the, the similar to the marital status, right? Here, same here, here, and then here and here if, if they were blind and over the limit. Head of household, now you're just one person again. So you could have one or two over the age limit or over the age limit and blind, but the standard deduction started at a higher point because you're a head of household, typically meaning you had a dependent. So 22,650 and 24,500 and then married filing separately. So now you have, you're married, but now you're filing uh, the, the separate returns. Uh, so, you're gonna, so then you have your scenarios for the married filing separately uh, situation. So you can see it actually gets, it seems fairly basic, but it actually gets a little bit complex when you start to think about the different combinations that could impact the standard deduction for these two factors with one or two people involved.